show you what zip tape is and how to apply it to prevent corrosion of your insulated pipes, commonly referred to as corrosion under insulation or CUI. Zip tape or Z-Rust inhibitor fusion tape can generically be referred to as self-fusing silicone. Self-fusing because it has no adhesive and unlike duct tape or electrical tape or any others that you may uh, experience, these guys stick to just about everything. Zip tape, however, pretty much only sticks to itself, but this unique feature works in your favor in a couple ways. First, there's no adhesive layer to be vulnerable to disbondment from heat or age or contact with chemicals. Secondly, the interaction between contacting layers actually leads to a commingling of molecules that ultimately results in a solid mass of silicone. As you can see, this isn't just tape. As a bonus, Zip Tape is infused with proprietary Z-Rust anti-corrosive chemicals that migrate to the surface of the pipes and prevents corrosion of the pipe on contact. From what I just told you, you might expect that intimate, consistent contact between the tape and the pipe is imperative, and you'd be correct. With that in mind, let's consider proper cleaning. The Steel Structures Painting Council, or SSPC, has well-established guidelines for surface preparation prior to applying caulks, adhesives, paints, mastics, or even tapes. The most fundamental of these are Surface Preparations 1 and 2, SP1 or SP2 for short. Now you can look these up for some more detail, but essentially SP1 is solvent cleaning and SP2 is hand tooling. With regard to solvent cleaning, collect a solvent that is completely fugitive or evaporates entirely, leaving no residue. Now these are things like acetone or xylene. Uh, those are the two most likely that you'll be able to take onto a petroleum site. Solvents to avoid are the oily ones that are like kerosene, diesel fuel, or even mineral spirits. From this glass plate, you will be able to see the difference between a squeaky clean surface of xylene and a not so great surface of mineral spirits. Now, a few hours ago, I cleaned this surface with mineral spirits. And you may not be able to see it, but there are small beads of uh, oily substance on there. Stick. And this side was cleaned with xylene, which is clear, clean, no residue or evidence of it. So let's see how hard it is to pull the tape off of both of these. The mineral spirits doesn't require a lot of pressure, and in fact it well, falls off after you get 30% uh, of it or so going. This side is a little bit tougher, and I could almost pull the sheet over if I don't hold it, and obviously much cleaner than the mineral spirit side. And the nature of mineral spirits is such that it's a cut taken from distillation of petroleum products, and it will incorporate some high boiling point solvents that won't evaporate, as well as some low boiling points ones. So again, a fugitive solvent such as acetone or xylene should be your selection. Solvent wipe, a braid solvent wipe is the mantra for surface preparation and industrial finishing. SAS for short. And in our case, the abrasion is simply a wire brush. After we've solvent wiped to remove greases and oils that are present on the pipe as we find it, we're going to take the wire brush and simply brush it as you might brush your teeth. Simply remove loose material, the rust particles, and any loose paint that may be on there. Following this, again, with the solvent wipe and with a fugitive solvent and let it evaporate completely and we're ready to go. Now, I'm going to let this dry for a minute or so. We'll come back and show you how to apply the tape. Okay, a couple minutes is all we needed for the solvent to evaporate here. And we'll uh, begin taking a look at our tape. 
begin, well, before I, uh, before I start with that, you'll, you'll notice that the tape comes as the tape itself with an interleaf that you need to peel off. Uh, we get questions as to which side uh, you should be uh, using one way or the other. Technically, it really doesn't matter, although the one with the, the plastic touching it would be expected to perhaps be cleaner near the end, they're both going to be about the same. And in fact, if you wrap it as I have one way or the other here, they both adhere quite nicely. Okay, so it does not matter which direction you go. Um, you probably want to have the waste uh, peelings fall to the outside, but that's your choice. We're now going to begin with an anchoring wrap. This is one or two winds in the same direction, uh, right in the same spot, while maintaining good tension. Now you can see that I'm trying to pull on this quite a bit. And I'll show you in just a moment. We, you want to maintain good tension so that we stretch uh, at least 20 to 30 percent off the original state. And you'll see it's going to get a bit narrower. Okay, that's good enough. Once we're done with our anchoring wraps, we're going to make successive wraps with uh, some translational movement down the pipe. And starting over the course of one wrap, we'll reach about 50% overlap and continue with that the rest of the way. Now because this is translucent, you'll see the difference in color as we work our way down the pipe. And here we can see where we have two thicknesses and only one thickness halfway across. Place your tape along this edge here to maintain that same 50% overlap and work your way down the pipe. Nice and even, again, stretching 20 to 30% to maintain adequate tension. Now, you should end up with a nice smooth surface, um, no wrinkles or bubbles in it. And we're going to continue on doing that until we either reach the end of a roll or until our job is finished. At the end of that, we're going to make the same anchoring wrap we did in the beginning. Now, in addition to that, I'm just going to cut it here to make it a little bit easier on myself. In addition to that, we're going to come back and make two or three wraps over each end, overlapping about another 50% and what appears to be another anchor wrap. What this is doing is preventing moisture from getting in the edges here and trying to creep its way along a bit of a spiral where you'll see there, there just may be a smidgen of space there because you can't get rid of it all. Those two, uh, beginning and the end, will make an excellent seal. Uh, it's particularly important if you're going vertical on this that you do that as well. In addition, we'll often recommend customers use a small amount of caulk around the top edge if they're going vertically. Uh, because these pipes get hot and cool and there's condensation, moisture is going to rest on the, what will be the top edge of your first wraps and simply sit there. Uh, the caulk is a good additive insur added insurance. Uh, against any moisture creeping in and under the tape. 